Hello, Malcolm here, and welcome to Quiet Time Coaching, episode 28. And today we're talking about singing it slow. Singing it slow. Now, have you ever tried singing a song really slowly? If you take something like Happy Birthday, and try singing that really slowly. It feels weird, doesn't it? Not Happy Birthday to you, but Happy Birthday. It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? And of course it doesn't sound very happy. <laughs> Most songs have a natural range of speeds that they can be sung at. Some, you know, slightly slower, slightly faster. But if you go too slow, it doesn't work. If you go too fast, it doesn't work and we all run out of breath anyway. But is there a case for singing hymns really slowly? I think there is. I think there's great spiritual benefit in this. and I'll tell you what I mean as we go on in this recording. I've made it a habit to sing hymns and choruses as part of my personal prayer times, devotional times. Um, I don't do it every day, but I do it quite frequently. I'll sing a hymn as I walk through the park. I'll sing a hymn in my house or a chorus. And I'll often do that uh, to stimulate my prayers, to give a focus to my prayers, and to enrich my prayers. But uh, uh, they're all prayers that I, uh, songs that I've sung so many times I've memorized them. It doesn't help me if I have to have a book open. It helps if I know them really well. But most of us that listen and watch these have been Christians a good while and sung hymns and songs many, many times. And you actually probably know more words to songs than you think you do. They're, they're lodged in the memory banks. So uh, let's dredge them out and use them. I think they can be very useful. So why is slow singing helpful? Let's uh, think about this for a moment. We dive deeper when we sing slower. Each phrase, each word, each line, each perhaps even each syllable becomes more significant when we sing them slowly. We are able then to think more about each word as well as sing the word. It goes deeper into the heart when we sing it more slowly. Have you ever tried eating something really slowly, chewing slowly, tasting slowly? You, you get a lot more of the texture of whatever it is you're eating. You get much more of the flavor if you eat it really slowly. If you haven't tried that, try that as a meditative exercise to uh, eat something really slowly. I did it once with an almond. I did it once with a small square of really dark chocolate. You know, that kind of dark chocolate that's really intense in flavor. It was quite an extraordinary experience to eat it so slowly. Not to say that slowing everything down is, is the goal. There is a place for going back to singing, very zealous and upbeat singing. It's not, slow singing isn't more spiritual than fast singing. It's just that perhaps we're missing out if we are not doing some slow singing in our devotional times with God. I, and this is easier to do personally than as a congregation. I think it's quite hard to do with a group, but you can do it on your own. So let's talk about two things that uh, this enables that I think can be very helpful. Firstly, lyrical richness. Some songs have got more words in than others, and the strength of the more wordy songs is their descriptive power. They use lots of words to create often a beautiful picture of God's nature, or God's creation, or God's character, or actions that God has taken on our behalf. The challenge is that uh, uh, sometimes we have so many words in a hymn that they pass us by before the brain has had a chance to connect with the meaning. Slowing it down helps us connect with the meaning of all those words. You get a rich deposit of God's truth and love into your heart and mind when you slow these words, these songs down. Good examples might be songs like the old hymn, Crown Him With Many Crowns. Look that up, look the lyrics up if you don't already know that hymn. Even if you don't know the hymn, look at that one, Crown Him With Many Crowns. Terrific words, very deep. Or in more modern terms, In Christ Alone, a hymn many of us would sing quite regularly. And again, the words in there are, are deep and sometimes we want to slow the song down a bit, but it can't, you can slow it down even more on your own rather than in church, in Christ alone. So lyrical richness is a benefit 
of slowing these songs down, we actually get to connect with the words more. Secondly, lyrical repetitiveness. Different kind of song here. Songs with very few lyrics and repeated words don't have the lyrical power of the ones I've been talking about just now, but they have their own richness if we truly meditate on those few and repeated words. Uh, Psalm 150 might be the best example in the Bible where David writes, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his acts of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness, praise him with the sounding of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and lyre, praise him with the tim timbrel and dancing, praise him with the strings and pipe, praise him with the clash of cymbals, praise him with the resounding cymbals, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I think we get the point. A lot of repetitiveness there, there's a reason for that about how about singing through or praying through, reading through a psalm like that, or a song with repeated words and emphasizing that repeat. What, what is that, why is that in there? Why is the, that word repeated so much? What does it really mean for me and in my relationship with God? Songs that work well with that are songs like Those Who Hope in the Lord by David Caswell. If you don't know it, you can look it up online. Those Who Hope in the Lord by David Caswell. Very few words, Those Who Hope in the Lord, uh, and so, and then God is so good, very simple uh, chorus, God is so good. You could try singing that really slowly. So just as an example, um, I'm going to now uh, do this practice with one of my favorite hymns, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, and I'm going to use the tune Rockingham, which is a more an older traditional tune than the one we often sing in the congregations where I am today. And I love this song. It meditates on the cross. It helps me. I'm just going to do a little bit of it for the purposes of this recording. It's not exactly as how, as how I would do it walking through the woods. Um, it's a bit artificial doing it for a recording, of course, so not exactly, but I just wanted to give, it a, give you a flavor of what it means to me. And often when I, well, I'll have to demonstrate it. That's probably the best thing to do. So when I survey the wondrous cross, I might do it something like this. When I survey the wondrous cross On which the Son of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. feel a little emotional doing that. It touches my soul when I sing more slowly and I could go through the whole hymn of course and often when I do it like this I'd actually stop part way through a line and pray about something. So I might pray about uh, when I survey the wondrous cross, I might sing that and then, then, then or when I survey, maybe get to that word, when I survey, survey God. What an amazing thing it must have been to actually see the cross if I'd been Peter or John Mary, what does it mean to survey it, to look at it, to examine it? Help me to look at the cross fresh today. And I go on, something like that. And it stop, start in the, in the hymn and think and pray about such things and what the scriptures say about them. So that's one of my uh, practices, which I do um, usually at least once a week, sometimes several times a week. And I wonder, I hope that this would help us to have a deeper 
a relationship with God by singing slowly. Have you tried slow singing for yourself in your personal walk with God? I'd recommend it. You don't have to be a great singer. It's not anything to do with your ability as a vocalist. It's all to do with just getting the words of scripture and the words of hymns that reflect scripture into our hearts, into our minds, and help enrich our relationship with God. Have a go the next time you have your quiet time. Try a hymn. If you need a book, it's okay if you can't remember words. It's not a problem to have a book with you, but just give it a go. And have you tried this kind of thing before? Uh, have you tried it with some other variations that I've not mentioned here? Is there something that you could recommend to the rest of us? Uh, I would be, I'd be very grateful to try new things, and I'm sure everybody else would that listens to these podcasts and watches these videos. So please leave a comment anywhere you hear or see this recording, because we learn best when we learn in community. And please pass the link to this recording on to one other person, just one other person that might benefit from what we're talking about in this lesson today. Until the next time we see each other, I pray and hope that your quiet times, your devotional times, are times of great spiritual enriching, and that you get as close to God as you can and you enjoy your walk with God. That's the goal of our existence, is to connect with and be connected to our great God so that we can then share that with others too. So until that next time, take care and God bless.